Okay, this question says, find the power absorbed or supplied by element 2. Now, when we look at this, where is element 2? Well, we know this is going to be element 2. Now, the thing is, element 2 is just a box. So, we don't know whether it is a source or whether it is a resistor. Therefore, in order to find the power absorbed in element 2, we're going to do the same thing we've been doing all along. We're just going to calculate the power that is going to be flowing in element 2. And they give us the voltage, which they label Vx. And we know the current in this particular circuit is going to be 2 amps because it is a series circuit. Therefore, when we look at this, we can say the power in element 2 is going to equal current times voltage. Now when we solve for this, we know the current is going to be 2 amps and it's going to be a positive 2 amps because the current is going to flow in the positive terminal. So we have positive 2 amps and the voltage, the voltage is going to be Vx. Now this is interesting because as we look at this circuit diagram, we don't have a Vx. So in this case, we're just going to write back Vx. So this is our voltage. We don't know it as yet, but we know it is represented by the term Vx. Now when we solve for the power, we're going to have current times voltage, 2 times Vx, and that's going to give us 2 Vx. So this is our answer for the first problem. Now the thing is, we don't know whether it is absorbed or delivered because we don't know what Vx is. So if Vx was a positive number, then we know this would be a positive power, which means that this element is absorbing power. But if Vx turns out to be a negative number, then that means that this power is going to be a negative power, which means it is therefore delivering power. So in this particular situation, let's solve the power in each one of these elements. Okay, now let's calculate the power in the 12 volt source. So we have the power, 12 volt source. We know that's going to be current times voltage. We know the current in this particular situation is 2 amps. But as this 2 amps flows around this circuit, we know when it reaches this particular element, it's going to go from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. Because it's going to go into the negative terminal, we're going to say that this is going to be negative current. I'm just going to write negative 2 for the current. And the voltage we know is just 12 volts. So we have 12 volts. And when we solve for this, negative 2 times 12 is going to give us negative 24 watts and because we have a negative power we can say that this particular element is delivering power or delivered power so we know for sure that this is our answer for that element negative 24 watts all right now let's do this element element one We have a 2 amp current that's flowing into the positive terminal. So we're going to have positive power. So I'm going to write 2 for the current. And the voltage is 4 volts. So we're going to have 4 volts. Now when we solve for this, the power in this element here is just going to be 2 times 4, which is going to be positive 8 watt. And because it's a positive power, it's going to be absorbed. Now let's do the last element, which is this element here. We have the power in the dependent source, so 2Vx. We know the current is 2 amps, but the current is going to flow into the negative terminal, which means it's going to be a negative 2 amps. So we have the power in the dependent source equals negative 2, and the voltage is going to be represented by 2Vx. So this is a dependent source and it's going to be a voltage dependent voltage source. And because it is a voltage dependent voltage source, we need the value of Vx in order to find for the value of the voltage source. So because we don't have that, 
for the voltage, we're just going to write 2Vx. Let me bring this over a little bit. 2Vx. Now let's solve for this. The power, therefore, is going to be negative 2 times 2Vx, which is going to give us negative 4Vx. Once again, we don't know whether this power is absorbed or delivered because of Vx. If, if Vx is positive in this situation, then we're going to have a negative power, which means that this power is being delivered. If Vx is negative, then we're going to have a positive power, which means this power is being absorbed. So let's use Telegin's theorem to calculate for Vx, because we know Telegin's theorem must hold true, that the power absorbed equals to the power delivered. So we know our first power we calculated was 2Vx, right? We don't know what Vx is, but we know that this is going to be our first power. We have positive 2Vx plus negative 24 plus 8 plus we have negative 4 Vx and we know all of that should equal 0. Now when we start to simplify this we can write this as 2 Vx minus 24 plus 8 minus 4 Vx equals 0. Now we're just going to combine like terms. So we're going to have negative 24 plus 8. That's going to give us negative 16. And we have 2Vx minus 4x. That's going to give us negative 2Vx equals 0. Now we're just going to solve for Vx, right? When we solve for Vx now, we're going to have negative 2Vx equals positive 16. We're going to divide both sides by negative 2. These two are going to cancel out. Therefore, Vx equals to negative 8 volts. Now let's look back at our problem. They want us to find the power absorbed or supplied by element 2. So we know that when we calculate the power for element 2, we end up with 2Vx. So in order to find the power in element 2, we know Vx equals negative 8 volts. So we're just going to plug in Vx into this particular formula to find what the power is for element 2. So right under it, I'm just going to say the power for element 2 equals 2. We know Vx equals negative 8. So I'm just going to write negative 8. And when you solve for this, the power therefore equals negative 16 watt. Therefore, we can say that the power in element 2 is going to be delivering power. I'm just going to write delivered. So this is your answer for the power in element 2. Now this one was a little more complex um, because once you had to find the power for element 2 and you realize you didn't know the value for Vx, which is a dependent variable, we then had to look at what we had. And we said, well, hmm, we know that the power in this element can be found this way. We can find the power in this. We can find the power in this. And in this particular element, we have a dependent variable once again. But the good thing is, these are the same dependent variables. So we just set up an equation because we followed passive sign convention and we calculated for the value of Vx. Once we had the value of Vx now, we can then plug in for the equation we had to calculate the power in element 2. And because we got a negative Vx, it comes to find out that this element, element 2, is actually a source which means that element 2 is not a resistor. It is, it is actually a source. And we know it's a source because it is delivering power. So don't be confused. Just take your time with these problems, right? Try to see what you have and go from there.